Good morning, afternoon, evening, or night. We're bringing you here with some creative and artistic delight. This is artist Stanislav Skolkowski, and it's absolutely cerebral, the types of art that this guy made. Like, it's something that you would have seen from like somebody who built the pyramids or like designed the uh, cathedral that took 800 years to build. It's just like, it's absolutely fascinating. And there's a documentary on Netflix that is really good. It's called Struggle, The Life and Lost Art of Sulkowski. And... It really highlights the fact that creativity and originality is really what forges the way ahead in every way. I mean, we see it in new technology and things like that. But, I mean, when you're talking about the expression and just the tonality of something unique that's created... You really, you can only really experience it, you know? And it's something that so much of today's society is like gatekeepers. Everything's about gatekeepers. And they stop people from doing things like this, where all along this guy's path, he was met with people telling him that he couldn't do things and that he sh his art should be modeled after a certain structure. And he never adhered to that. And he said that these things inhibited the actual growth of something, you know, of, of you coming from you, an individual's imagination. And it's much to the way that, like, children are able to just see so much stuff that we don't in a lot of ways because they, they, they don't have the structure of how everything is supposed to be in society. And so it can just be a really big impedance to like seeing everything in a way that would be through your own perspective, you know? And a lot of times in life, we're met with just things that really go against what we feel is how we should be expressing ourselves in the moment. Whether it's a job that you have, or, you know, relationships, or you being alone or something like that there's a reason for all of these things when they when they tell you something when you're feeling things you know the your emotions are not only to just react to other human beings you know like it's very easy when you look at another human being and they're experiencing emotions or displaying emotions through their tone or their expression to interpret that and you know most of the way that we spoke and even in language the way that we communicate it's mostly nonverbal. so in the same way that people express themselves the world is always doing that and when you close off like your organic conduit to the world like that where you're you're always putting things through a lens that somebody else told you or something before you told you to adhere to now obviously you don't want to have like no basis in life you should always accept things that seem profound in their own meaning you know and having that that sense of grounding in reality Obviously, you don't, you don't want to be too displaced from the actual physical world. But there's a balance to be stricken in these things. And 
it can be very difficult sometimes to toe that line when a lot of things in society are structured, you know? We're here because of a lot of the structure that we've built in society, but really, by no means is that what's driven us forward. You know, it, it's the critical thinkers of Greece and the, you know, the philosophers, all the people that chose to go against the contemporary status quo and, and the things that were going on. That's why you really cannot be affronted by, by adversity and, and having that that wall that hits you, you know, when, when people are telling you that the things you're doing, the things you're saying are not right. In some ways, always good to take in some critique and, you know, be objective and critical of yourself. Make sure you are doing things for the right reasons. But especially in artistic expression, you could see it here. The, these are the types of people, this man, you know, Stanislav Sulkowski, he really forged some of the most impressive art. There's really probably not one person on this planet that wouldn't be amazed by all of the things that this guy has created. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal. And it's kind of breathtaking in that way. But what we could take away from that something very important about today's world and that's that we cannot be distracted by all of the distractions because there's there's so much going on right now that you really got to take a back seat to things you know it's it's super hard now to to really i mean you, there's a bunch of things to take a stand on and that's for certain, you know, but when it comes to things that are uncertain, and there's a lot of that in the world right now, you know, it doesn't help for so many people to just jump to conclusions with things. I mean, you want safety, you want prosperity, you want the pursuit of happiness, and all the freedoms that go therein. And what's been happening is just that like you know the world is behind where as a people we're misinformed you know as as uh, someone once put it and i forget their name they're not an they're not a nobody and then that they, they were um they actually have the documentary on netflix ancient apocalypse but they, you know, we're a species with amnesia, and it's like, so much of what's happening today is because of the ignorance of everything that happened before us, you know? It's like, let's take America, for example, you know? The natives were here, and me, as a modern American, I, I'm an immigrant. We're all immigrants. We know that. We came here because it was a land of opportunity that just like the Palestinian people, the civilians, the Palestinian civilians, the innocent people over there, it's like they're in a land that they believe is theirs and it's under attack. And there are these things that happen, you know, there's, there's, catastrophe there, there's a lot of chaotic events that happen but the point is that when we came the europeans came to this country there were people who forged a way and that for whatever the intentions might be it landed them here in america and it allowed regular people the people of europe to take a chance and a lot of them died on their way here but they they wanted to try something new. And those people then did things that coincided with greed. And there was, there's a give and a take throughout all of this that ultimately leads us to where we are today. And the point being in this is that, like today, that it's like we're on stolen land here in America, is what people would say 
some people. And it's like, unfortunately, there's parts of that, that that are true. But why are we not doing things to rectify the problems as opposed to make more of them? You know, that is one of the most counterproductive things. The Mexicans, the people of the Caribbean, the Canadians, there's there's similarities between all of us in the way that we pushed the Native Americans out of this land. They weren't really given their due. There was so much that we took from them in terms of their culture, their knowledge, a lot of the things going on with that, that there wasn't a fair exchange. People manipulated them. But it's much like nowadays how, you know, this is history. We don't have the 100% specifics of these things we think we do in some terms but we don't know what's been lost and in a lot of that that's where you got to see between the lines and it's just like there was exchanges that happened between the governments of the world at the time and they had their own plans and things that they wanted to do and push through and in effect there's something that happens because of that people are given opportunities and it's like right now you got tons of migrants coming into this country now remember the rest of the world is basically america's been doing bad if you think we're doing bad the rest of the world has been suffering immeasurably compared to us it's like we're in a buffer zone here in America, specifically. It's like the capital of the world in that sense. Like, imagine an old-style castle with, like, a tiered, you know, elevation. And as you get higher and more protective, you've got the, the higher-class citizens and, and just the, the, the bastion of, of the keep. You know, let's not say higher-class citizens, but at the time in the castles. Anyway, point is... Is that in America, it's like this is the bastion. And everybody wants to come here for opportunity. And it's the one place to be. So when your country is being, there's something that happens. Like imagine if everybody had the resources. I live in New York City. If I had the resources, I probably wouldn't be living here right now. It's it's absolutely bad shit nuts what's going on like it's very rare nowadays that i do not hear police sirens or an ambulance or something like that and i mean it is new york city but it wasn't always like this right now it's kind of ridiculous there's there's a lot of things going on there's just like endless noise there's there's just constant banging fucking things it's like things are strange nowadays a lot of things going on in this city that even though there's anomalies every day there's some very uncomfortable and uh just disconcerting things so everybody wants to come here as a just a means to get the hell away because even though every place is doing bad it's still we're doing pretty good over here compared to everybody else and the other people know that the people who are coming here they just want economic opportunities there's the 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 processing center in manhattan the line is like forget it the immigrants what you know they're really you know you got to remember they're illegal whether they're coming here for asylum or not or whatever it is if you cross the border and you are here without being processed you are illegal the minute that you get processed and you have your refu refugee status or the asylum, whatever it might be, and you are processed, you are whatever it is they determine after that point. But un until that point, you know, you're illegal here. And there's a lot of things with, with the citizens in America that we, we don't find it acceptable for that stuff to be happening on this massive scale. We're upset with the government. We don't want a lot of this shit going on and getting out of hand because there's too many Americans that need help. And, you know, we're always giving money abroad. It doesn't end with that. We're so gracious and, and, and generous with all of the tax money that we have. Meanwhile, I'm disabled. I'm waiting for Social Security disability 
for almost two years now. There's no word. There's no way to even like talk to them in the way of being like, yeah, you know, I've been doing really bad. This is how the current situation is. I can't move. You know, I've been, I've been homebound for the last year and a half. I'm, I'm incapable of, of doing, you know, substantial gainful employment. I can't physically do the labor that I used to do before. I, I'm just, between the medication I take and then, you know, the side effects of that where I'm fatigued and the side effects of my, you know, uh, illness, it, it's, it's, it's a lot that is not taken into account. All they do is ask the doctors about things, you know. Meanwhile, there's more money going into Medicaid and, and, um, and um the basically the free healthcare system the, the more in there than in the social security disability or social security in general so it's like at this point you know there there's a lot of stuff that needs to be rectified and bringing it back to just people who pave a way forward there's so much right now where we're just kind of need the gatekeepers and the people who are not letting anybody in there needs to be new things made there's a reason why you know stuff is supposed to eventually like get superseded by something better you know and nowadays a lot of that stuff is not being allowed to happen where you know you're developing these ideas you're developing these things and in one way or another they don't they don't get to see their full fruition of where it would have gone if they had the ability to continue that in a way that gained traction in a normal fashion, you know? In a lot of ways, people are being silenced and just defunded, deplatformed. It's, it's kind of crazy. And a lot of the way that, that the media is and the content creation, you can see it almost on every platform and you can even hear the content creators talk about it where it's like well you know i got into this type of content because it got me a lot of views and it's like i always really wanted to be a writer and i wanted to do these things but i i, I just i found that you know doing these videos xyz about this stuff it always got me more views and more likes and and you know chasing that is just something that is what's in in every aspect like chasing after these things that other people are putting in front of you like a carrot on a stick it's just ridiculous you know you're chasing these things you don't even know where you're going because a lot of these people you know now they have success they have the monetary means to do the things that when they first started and they had nothing they wanted to do but now they're not doing that. They're, they're too busy chasing money and fame. And they get lost in all these like material pursuits. And it's not good for your soul, man. Because there's something about it that's important to humanity. Where, you know, our soul is important. And the spirituality that we feel. You don't have to be religious. I, I was raised Catholic. But from the time that I could think for myself, I was an atheist. And then the minute I started questioning that, I was like, why the hell would I believe in nothing? There is nothing to gain. There is zero to gain from believing in nothing. Because 100%, you're going to believe in something. You're going to fall for something. Something is going to fill that niche. And the first thing that you should think of is, well... There's nothing wrong with just believing in something bigger than me. Because obviously, like, I mean, I have like a hundred year lifespan. This whole thing around me is like, at the most, we don't even understand how complex and how long and everlasting it is. So, you know, who am I to say, if, if I can say that nothing exists, there's no God, then... I can definitely say that there is a God, you know, and I can, can't confirm or deny neither with a hundred percent certainty. So anyway, 
you're really limiting yourself in that aspect because why would you not want to partake in something that could uplift you and really bring sustenance and substance to your life because i mean have you never heard of like the stories of people who just are like in the middle of battle middle of war and like they're getting shot they got wounds they're missing limbs and they're able to complete these things part of it is because they have a motivation and a desire a drive to do these things but also many of those times the people are driven and protected by what they feel is another worldly possession and something that is just carrying them forward and that alone it's like when you watch a superhero movie and you're like oh my god you know you hear the boom, and then boom fucking Superman, Captain Avenger, <laughs> he comes in, shields, fucking Batman goggles, everything's flaring, you know? And it's like, you get you get those feels. That's part of it. That's absolutely part of it. It's the, the, There's a term, I forget. It's pretty pretty cray-cray. But when, when you hear music, that really gets you, you know, you get those bumps. You get the goosebumps from music and that, like, tingling, inspiring feeling. It's all part of it, you know, when when you can tap into that and you might feel alone and you can always just, you can just be there with yourself in a sense, you know, like that's what it is. It's like it's you in the physical world and your mind is doing its own thing. It's somewhere else, obviously, like it's creating ideas. It's it's doing all of these things in a way. That is not like another person. Should you be isolated and, you know, up to your own thing? Yeah, of course, your actions might tell the same story. But what you guys were thinking about is going to be a whole different, whole different universe, you know? Be some people, and that's why humanity is amazing, because we've got people that are doing everything. It's like every animal that's out there, like, we almost like have a human being that's like that. Like there are people who just in some way are like representative of an animal, whether it's their like behavior or the way that they look, you know, like we embody everything in nature. Like we're, we're just this conduit into everything for sure. Because what we do, we just create these things that are like, you know what what so what if if someone who was not the creator looked at a lot of the people who were creating this stuff like piece by piece they'd be like what are you doing and many much of the time that's exactly what happens in these people's lives where they're looked at as like you are an idiot but it's not that type of thing where they're stupid they're they're in tune with something and they have a disconnect from from the human experience as we're putting it today like in today's time we're on this timeline of like you know here's what happened and the structure and you know you go to school you know you grow up you get a job you have a family there's a lot of these things that are just structured in society and there's many of us, whatever it might be, it's just the balance in the universe where more so now than maybe ever, I feel like that's why some of the mental illness is taking effect is like, well, I wouldn't even call it mental illness. It's just that in some way, your body is different. Your mind is different. Autism multiple sclerosis a lot of these these unexplainable you know neurological disorders or brain disorders or autoimmune disorders these things in my opinion are like a response to the world we're living in there's so much physical contamination in our world 
that something is making us more spiritually in tune. You know, maybe it's the same way that we become less of like a physical being and more of this like big headed, you know, totally incompetent, physically just inept type of being is because who knows, maybe just the process of industrialization becoming a more advanced civilization, you kind of like, you, you poison the nature out of yourself in a way, you know, I don't know if it's that or just the fact, like I was saying, that there's more of a need for spirituality more than ever nowadays, because there's like, we're moving at a faster pace. And for the people who are not living in cities, it's like this trade-off because you're living a better life for the most part. Things are slower, calmer, people are nicer, and you know, there's a more of a connection to your local community. But in these big cities, like New York City, I've been living here for 32 years, born and raised in the city I've always praised. And there, there, there are res there is research done and statistics about this stuff, but it's like when you're living in a big city, that you're just like on a faster track. Like you learn things quicker, you absorb things quicker, you can like read people's behavior quicker. Like everything's happening faster, so you have to just be able to like live on this quicker speed, and you have this disconnect from the local level, and that's what kind of makes you always thinking in like these big picture type of things and you know uh, probably a big reason why a lot of the the innovation comes from people who've lived in the cities you know silicon valley uh, you know india even uh, places with massive populaces but like density massive population density and there's just something about it where it's like no time to lose and even your brain and your your body is just working at that faster speed to keep up with everything and you know nowadays holy sh nikes like you realize now with the social media that like things are just getting violent like the amount like i don't even try to watch those things cuz you got to remember with the algorithms like any interactivity, any interaction, or you just staying on a video and watching it over and over again, it doesn't matter, like, it's tracking everything that you're doing, it doesn't matter on what app, TikTok, everything now, Google, all of these things, search engines, YouTube, all of these things, the algorithms are watching what you're doing, in, in the statistical data sense, so, you know, it's not about what you feed to it. It's also how you interact with it. That is exactly how it's building these models. So I try not to interact or like or share really anything too violent because it's like the algorithm is just going to keep giving you this shit. But now I just seen a, sh well, oh, forget about it. I don't even want to go into these things too much, but I seen a train just plow over like fucking oh, 50, a herd of sheep because the herder was just like, I don't even know why you got your sheep on the fucking railroad tracks. Anyway, that dude's fault. Then uh, some other crazy stuff. I'll, I'll keep it in the light category. Next one was like some dude that's just getting filmed, getting fucking attacked and eaten by sharks as he disappears beneath the water. Like it, it's fucking crazy. Why are these things being shown to people? Like the these these platforms are allowed to like because things are moving so fast, there's like absolutely no way to regulate this stuff in real time. So like who knows if it's just the amount like more people are posting violent shit cuz the world is just getting like more and more fucked up. The whole entertainment industry is just like pushing violence and gory ass shit constantly and it's like yeah man uh, forget it it's like out of control it'd be different if people were like self-confident nowadays and you knew that them being able to be shown some of these things would would like 
be okay. It's like, yeah, it's fine. You know, you don't want to be the guy who's against like violent video games and violent movies and stuff. But, you know, the, the way that they make the psychological divide is amazing because it's like, I am such a moderate and I always process things through two, you know, every different lens that I possibly can. And even if I have a position that I feel pretty strongly about, I am totally open to hearing something that might change my mind and changing my mind about that. So no problem with that. But ugh, now, now I lost my train of thought where I was going. That sucks. That's unfortunate. But the, the you know, the, the, the social media companies are kind of getting out of hand with this stuff. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are, everything going on. Appreciate you listening. Take care, everybody.